You know, we tend to see the earthquake and the, and the actual tropical storm formation or intensity at a different time than the yes. peak geomagnetic activity. Yes. Um, of course, everything occurred for a reason. And before something happened, something else had to happen before. When you have, if you think about magnetic field, before magnetic field can occur, we have electric field that's occurring, and um, so if you think if you think of storm as a magnetic uh, phenomenon, which looks like a, a spiral vertex, and and that's kind of representing something really similar to Burton current. So so that's a magnetic phenomenon. So before magnetic phenomenon can happen, you can have you need a compression. Uh, of, of fluctuation of uh, charge or potential, which brings uh, uh, the electric field fluctuation. So, um, and if we look into electric field fluctuations, we know that um, it needs to be compressed either from inside or from the outside. And um, in terms of outside would be the space weather uh, phenomenon. The inside fluctuation, we know that uh, it leaked very well to earthquakes. So, so those two are quite connected and that's one of the reasons why we typically see um, earthquake occur before tropical storm or after the tropical storm. Mm -hmm. because, um, it's a signature of fluctuations of electric field or elect or some some researcher kind of refer that to electro electrostatic oscillation and um, not electromagnetic. So so when when um, when earthquake occurs, that's causing a rise in the fluctuation of charge. Then it produces electrical discharge. And, uh, and those electrical discharge uh, phenomenon come afterwards uh, and produce current and current produce heat and vibrations and other things. So, and those electrical discharge phenomenon typically uh, link pretty well to electromagnetic uh, phenomenon of radiation. So that's a kind of strong tropical storm formation, geomagnetic storm, those two are kind of linked, but they not occur at the same time with the earthquake. Yeah, that makes sense because, yeah. um, you know, you, you wouldn't have the, the instability, if you will, at the same place at the same time. It would move through the system, and so... Yes. Uh, that, that, that makes perfect sense. You know what's interesting? We saw the, the earthquake and tropical storm, uh, storm formation really hold true when, uh, when the storm season was, was still strong for New Zealand and, and Northern Australia. And now we're seeing it in Mexico and the Bay of Bengal. But I got to tell you, over the last two years, the place I've seen it strongest, I think, is the Philippines. Mm-hmm. It's like every time there is a low pressure system that heads near there, especially if it gets anywhere near typhoon status, the Philippines are going to have an earthquake. It, it happens almost every time. And, you know, we haven't had a bigger one in the Philippines. And, um, you know, I, I would like to say months. It, it, it may be merely weeks, but it's still, you know, it's a big, you know, big earthquake zone being a part of uh, the western areas of the Ring of Fire. And I think that as typhoon season gets back into gear, the Philippines need to gear back up for some earthquakes. You know that we have significant earthquakes today, right? Yes, in Greece. Yes, so you know that um, in, in 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 the presentation I did at the universe, I only present a case study when this actually occur at the mini maximum sunspots. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's actually occur during the minimum sunspot too, when the the sunspot kind of drops rapidly, and. Um, if you look at the sunspot number, um, you see that it's actually a sharp drop, uh, which occurred uh, a day or two ago. Yeah. And without having to look into uh, a lot of other index, 
we know for sure that's going to be some significant earthquake. <laughs> yeah, and as fast as it dropped off, it's already started, you know, ping-ponging back the other way. There's There was right. a delta spot that formed overnight on the departing limb, and, yes. um, you know, there's actually going to be a sunspot collision on the uh, in the incoming spots uh, on the back side of those ones that are in the south uh, eastern quadrant the back side group is spreading laterally so quickly that the lead umbra it looks like it's going to collide with an umbra out in front of it which is pretty interesting yes you know that what caused the change in sunspot right no <laughs> what <laughs> um this is something i don't haven't talked about <laughs> But we can actually predict solar activity uh, before it happened. And um, it has to do with how the system, how the solar system works. And you probably heard the familiar theory of planetary alignment. Oh, of course, yes. Are you talking about the, the planets that are further out and how they regulate, like, like Neptune? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> There's a theory behind it, and it's actually a simple theory than most people think, but it has to be relies on. Uh, everything as a whole is the same system, not just a dot of planets. And it's, it's actually laid to space around it and how, how the whole thing acts as a big electrical circuit, a big electrical resonance circuit. And um, during this time, yes, there's some, there's some significant alignment. And um, we... People like to argue is you know gravity, gravitational force is not. Oh yeah, there's there's so much more it's than not, gravity at play. There's so much more than gravity. gravity. This is not a gravitational force. I will tell you, it's electrostatic <laughs> oscillation, and um, and it's linked to ether, and and the way it works is it's it's not that hard. It's 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 like it works like sound wave. If you think about it, mm -hmm. uh, sound wave rather than electromagnetic, and and in, and you imagine sound wave instead of having sound, it sound is uh, air, which is a medium of vibration, right? Mm -hmm. You have space as a medium of vibration, and space uh, itself uh, contains uh, charge, and those charge. Um, it's a it's a symptom of vibrations and it's a longitude vibration just like uh, sound and um, there's a node it's called resonant node um, that actually plays along each orbital path of, of um, planets and that's how the planets got locked into the orbit in, in the circular rotation without spiraling toward the sun and um, so it's a resonance lock uh, circuit and each planet also locked to a position a specific position in that orbital path okay and that so it's not a random position that or uh, the planets orbiting around the sun, but it's actually a phase lock uh, position, and uh, it locked to to the resonance vibration um, along the, its orbital path, and most most of the time you you cannot see it, but you see it uh, as as a really small fluctuation. Uh, for example, I can I can give you an example for the Earth. The Earth has season. There are four seasons, right? Yeah. Typically, typically, and those season is set by the alignment between the Sun, the Earth, and the galactic plane. That's why we have December twenty first is the is the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the inclination of the planets, yeah. like what we are taught. That would be probably one of the most ridiculous coincidences in the world. I remember the first time I found out that on the solstice, uh, 
you know, the solstice for for both winter and summer, uh, regardless of which hemisphere you're in, there was an alignment with the center of the galaxy, and someone was trying to tell me that that was just a coincidence, that it was all about this tilt of the Earth, and I was like, okay, maybe it's about the tilt of the Earth, but then of course the, something about the tilt of the Earth must have to do with that galactic yeah. alignment, then, right? It's a fate mechanism. It's what? It's a fate law mechanism. Uh, that's why the winter start on that day. And you also have summer start on the opposite, right? Opposite uh, yeah. position. And you also have uh, uh, summer, sorry, spring and autumn start in the 90 degrees from that alignment, right? So, so you have uh, four quadrants. So they are 90 degrees. So all these positions are significant. Uh, they are locked between three different uh, objects, right? The sun, earth, and this, this one is galactic. And then from there, you have 90 degrees from it, which is another locked position. So, so you see around one orbital path of the earth, there are four locked positions already. And if you imagine each planet, they are circulating, and if you consider any three objects um, that are aligned, so they have a lock position of four four quadrants as well, and and then you combine all those for all those different combinations, you got a significant event. You know when it's going to occur. So when all all those planets are face locked, and as I would like to address that the planets. Even though it looks like a dot, um, it locked to the space uh, around its, its orbital path. So the vibration actually, even though it's invisible, is is actually if you see from the top view of the solar system, you see it, it's actually uh, interactive things of the whole entire space surrounding that dot. Not just that dot, but actually surrounding the solar system, surrounding all the orbital path. So, so we cannot just treat uh, the planets as a dot anymore because it's just a part of the stable node of those space. Hmm. So you, you can have many different combination of stable nodes um, for for many planets, and when they are locked into position, they are in phase or a uh, tangent uh, quadrature from it, then you have uh, instabilities, a uh, maximum instabilities or maximum sta sta stabilities, and that's when the sun erupts yeah. into instabilities, uh, a, a, trans a, a, a sudden uh, instabilities. And this is the reason why we have um, if you look into uh, even sunspot, probably the easiest way to track because it's a really well-known index. Uh, each time uh, when there's a dip in sunspot number and we take a look at what planets are aligned, you know that one, one significant one I can tell you right away is the, the Saturn. So when Saturn aligned with the inner planets, the Venus or the Mercury, you will see a sudden dot drops in sunspot around that day. And then that's when you will have earthquakes and other things, <laughs> which, which is a sudden uh, fluctuation of space. So that's why we have sudden fluctuation in uh, space failure as well, even though the sun doesn't seem to be active much. Um, but it does uh, correlate in terms of minimum, you know. Absolutely. So, so the maximum and the minimum, and it, it ties well with the, the resonant vibration of space. Um, it has nothing much to do with gravity. Um, and this is something that uh, the current understanding of science just had not been through this but there's so many people have been observing this connection. 
for a very long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and hopefully I will get a chance to talk more about it. Uh, it's better to show experiments than just talking, you know. But it has a lot to do with semantic experiment, and you can actually take a look at that on YouTube. Oh, well, hey, I, I'll tell you what. I will definitely take a look at that on YouTube. And um, when uh, when the Mobile Observatory Project comes to Arlington, yeah. Virginia, I'd yeah. love to, to film some of that and put it in the documentary we're making. Um, you know, okay. I, I think that, that your work should be featured among among the among the stuff that we're going to be showing there uh, as much as possible. Uh, it, in case you couldn't tell, we love you over at the Observers.